Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to my channel dedicated to all things gaming in mixed and virtual reality. Today I'm going to be matching up my brand new Oculus Quest 2 with a brand new Wi-Fi 6 router then jumping into virtual desktop to see how they perform together. Excited? Me too. So let's dive straight in then. Remember, we are born to respawn. Before we start, this is not a virtual desktop setup tutorial. That video is here. So if you want to know how to get started with virtual desktop, I suggest you go watch that video, then come back. All right? The channel is growing rapidly at the moment, so if you enjoy the madness that is Mac in VR, please subscribe and drop a like on this video. It would really help me out. Thanks. So the Quest 2 supports the newest Wi-Fi standard 802.11ax commonly referred to as Wi-Fi 6, and I'm not going to bore you with the technical details but the new standard is supposed to have 30% faster data transmission speeds and reduced latency. Though it must be said this is not a generational leap forward by any means, as the main reason for the standard was to increase efficiency in high density areas, so we must temper our expectations. Still, if it's new and shiny, then Mac wants a piece of that. Just to point out that I'm no way a big YouTube channel that can demand the highest spec kit from manufacturers, so I had to buy a Wi-Fi 6 router with my own money. Bearing in mind that the sole reason for the purchase was to improve my experience in virtual desktops, so the only device connecting to the router would be my Quest 2. I settled on a budget router from TP-Link that ticked all the boxes for me, plus was able to act as a standalone access point. And here it is, the TP-Link Archer AX10 Wi-Fi 6 AX1500 megabits per second, gigabyte dual band router, costing about £80 in the UK. Looks pretty nice, quite understated next to some of the other high-end routers from Netgear, or the Asus GTAX, which looks more like a home defense robot. After a quick unboxing, setup was pretty straightforward. Plug it in, plug your ethernet cable into the WAN port, then connect your PC by one of the four LAN ports, turn it on, download the TP-Link Tether app to your mobile phone, set up a password, and that was pretty much it. I fired up my Quest and connected to the router's 5 GHz channel, and as you can see here, excellent signal strength with a 1200 megabit per second speed. Previously on the 802.11ac or Wi-Fi 5 standard, I was getting 866 megabits per second max, so actually a 38% increase in data transmission speed, which is above what was stated, but will it make a difference? Let's go find out. I decided on a selection of different games, so we have Beat Saber for the rhythm action speed test, Onward for, well I just really like Onward alright, Half-Life Alex to push those graphic settings, and finally my new favourite game, Population One to test the online PVP quality over virtual desktop. So I'll see you back here in one minute, enjoy. Looks like we're taking the stairs. Just for reference, I used OBS to record my gameplay and overlaid the stream app on this recording so that you can see my latency in real time. I also tried changing the bitrate in virtual desktop settings but they, it didn't seem to make a difference. I believe that virtual desktop now sets its own bitrate limit according to the strength of your Wi-Fi signal. So mine was 68 megabits per second. So the million dollar question, did I see an improvement in visual quality or a reduction in latency? Not as much as I thought. My latency was relatively low and absolutely rock solid at 27 milliseconds with Half-Life Alex sitting at 25 to 35 milliseconds, which I have never managed before. But it is not the staggering improvement and sub 20 millisecond latency I may have been expecting, though I do think the faster data transfer speed is why there was an improvement for Half Life Alex, which usually sits between 35 and 40 milliseconds latency, according to the Stream app. 
As I said earlier, the new Wi-Fi 6 standard is not a generational leap forward, but does use clever technology to increase Wi-Fi speeds in congested areas, which is, I believe, its main goal. As well, this is a brand new technology, so perhaps the clever boffins at Oculus and Virtual Desktop haven't quite figured out how to maximize the performance yet, and there is more to come from Wi-Fi 6 in the future. We will have to wait and see. So in conclusion, is a step up to Wi-Fi 6 worth it? For some people, probably not. For me, I think it is worth it with latency pegged at 27 milliseconds, but absolutely rock solid with no stuttering. I think investing in the TP-Link AX10 was definitely the right thing to do. Purely for the rock solid stutter-free latency at 27 milliseconds, with a bonus that Half-Life Alex now also runs around that figure. Playing Population 1 online, I even forgot I was playing the PC version wirelessly over virtual desktop as the experience was so smooth. I do love virtual desktop, such a game-changing app. I think the budget TP-Link AX10 is a great entry-level Wi-Fi 6 router and there are still so many settings that I can fiddle with. Plus, some of my subs have given me an idea to use the router as an access point with an Ethernet dongle to connect to the PC. So watch out for that video soon. What is your latency like in virtual desktop? Have you got a Wi-Fi 6 router? Any tips that can help the community reduce latency? Get involved and comment down below. If you enjoyed this content or found it helpful, please subscribe and maybe drop me a like, it would be much appreciated. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.